Hallelujah. I just wanted to come in here for a second and um, in the midst of, of this teaching right here, I just want to give some understanding. Um, I understand um, that, that many people will will think that Pastor Dow is strange, um, especially in the um, the teachings that come forth. But, but let me um, explain something to you here. Uh, I have been keeping the Sabbath for well over 20 years. I've been in holiness for well over 20 years. Um, I've been in the dietary law for well over 20 years. So the stuff that I'm teaching you is not something that I just recently come to the knowledge of the truth uh, within the last few years. Um, I have been teaching and preaching um, healing and deliverance um, for over 10 years. Um, and so you, you see, brothers and sisters, the things that I'm talking to you about, uh, they're not strange. They're strange um, to you because they're foreign to your ears because the places that you have been going to um, does not teach the scripture. They don't teach uh, biblical principles. Uh, they teach religion. And when you're taught religion, and when someone like me comes along and starts teaching you things that are contrary to your religion or your philosophies or your traditions, then they sound strange. And this is not uncommon. So, you know, as far as me keeping the commandments or being a commandment keeper and being in holiness, um, having the truth and the knowledge of who we are. I mean, I've been preaching and teaching that we're Israel for over 10 years. Um, I've been keeping the feast days for over 10 years. So you can see the time frames that I'm giving you, um, the things that I'm talking about right now, um, is that, you know, there are different increments. And that's, that comes from personal study and growth. Yeah, because I, I realize that when you go into these churches, you're only going to be taught the doctrine that they want you to teach, that they, they, they want you to hear. Um, they don't ever expect for you to go outside of the realm or the sphere of the doctrinal teachings that are in your church. In other words, they don't ever expect for you to go into this book or this this, this Bible right here and, and read it for yourself. Uh, they know that people, all they're going to do is just go back and, and rehash and read over the things um, that they have given you. But I've exercised self-autonomy. Um, that means independent thinking. And I still exercise it. And not only that, I teach um, our people here straightway as well as a little small congregation in South Carolina to practice independent thinking. Um, I think we all earnestly contend for the faith. I think you all to study to show yourself approved. I think that when you have questions about stuff, you need to bring them up and you don't need to be ostracized or, or, or plagiarized or, or uh, you don't need to be crucified because you, you are, are challenging um, something that you believe to be true. I, I think that, that, that it needs to be an open discussion. There's safety in a multitude of counselors. Now, I want you to understand, if you turn over to Acts uh, chapter 17, uh, let's start at verse 16. I want to show you that um, the attitudes of people and, and the things that I deal with is not uncommon. Uh, the apostle Saul or Paul, he dealt with the same thing um, even in his day. So let's turn to Acts 16. Uh, and let's read. Let's start at verse 16 and let's see what the scripture has to say. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city woefully given to idolatry. Is that not America? Is that not your churches? You go in your churches, you see crosses, uh, you see stars, uh, you see statues, uh, you see pictures and images of uh, angels, gar angels, gargoyles, uh, demons, doves, uh, all the things which are forbidden in scripture and tell us that we ought not to do but contrary to that because somebody uh, gives you an ideal or philosophy and they tell you their personal opinion you without knowledge and being without knowledge is simply you just don't know you don't know what they're saying and if you don't know what they're saying um, and you're inclined to agree with what's you have been taught to you uh, because you just simply don't know that's why God said in Hosea 4 6 that his people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge um so I'm glad to see a lot of people coming to the knowledge of truth in these end times and especially uh, a lot of things about us as Israelites are being revealed in this end time and I'm telling you what it's like pulling eye teeth to get some of these um, 
formal ways out of you. Believe you me. But like I said, your preachers and teachers and stuff, they never expect for you to go outside the boundaries of the church um, in order for you to be taught by the Holy Spirit themselves or even anybody else because uh, they will make an enemy of them. But let's continue on in verse 17. Uh, Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Did you hear that? So he disputed. You hear that? So it, it's nothing uncommon, brothers and sisters, to challenge preachers, talent challenge uh, teachers, or anybody who seems to be uh, somewhat. Um, that's what disputing is. And I mean, uh, disputing, the word uh, disputed means to reason with, to preach, uh, to think different things with some or with one's self or you know to ponder to converse or to discourse that's the definition of disputing used here in the Greek now verse 18 then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him and some said what will this babbler say ain't that the first thing that happened when you people hear me talking um, when I talk, I don't agree with your Christianity, your philosophy, your Christian religion and doctrines. And so therefore, you, you know, people assume that I'm a babbler. But know this, that I am not without knowledge. I'm a Jeremiah 315. That's exactly what I am. So a lot of people will automatically assume that I'm some babbler and stuff. But yet everything that I speak about, preach about and teach about is the truth coming from the word. The only thing I do is offer you the truth. Listen to this. Or some other, or other some. Um, I'll start at verse 18 again for clarity. Uh, then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? Other some. He seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. That's what I believe. That's what I preach. That's what I, you know, that's what I teach. You know, I'm amazed because. I go places and I teach things that people, it's foreign to their ears because their previous training um, has not taught them. And so immediately they make me an enemy because I, I, I do not teach anything um, that religion or you have what you have been previously trained in. And so people automatically assume that there's something wrong with me. Could there be a chance that there's something wrong with you? Let me think about that for a minute. Anyway, so I preach Jesus and the resurrection. Uh, and not only that, I preach the commandments, the power of God. I preach it all. And verse 19, and they took him and bought him unto Epagias, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. And see, and that's the reason why even this simple study on the Sabbath day, it may seem like a new doctrine. But today, people don't even want to hear uh, people just want to stay off in their little old, uh, corners and stuff. And that's the reason why the church is impotent today. Because we don't have leaders that actually want to concertedly get together. And if change needs to take place and we need to change, then by all means, let's do it for God's sake. But people don't want to do that. They have their own little kingdoms. They're comfortable right where they're at. And, and the last thing they want is change, especially men of God. You know, they have this thing that run around in their head that if somebody comes in and teach something different and, and then they have a greater word than what I have, then I'll be diminished in the minds of the people. And I can't have that. So it's best for me to keep these people at bay. And it's best for me to put up walls, you know, walls of um, different modes of thinking in front of the people's minds so that when other people come, I already have them in a defense mode so they can't receive. They're already there. And see, and that's, that lets you know that we've been mind numbed and we've been mind controlled over the years. Um, and, and what we're trying to do is wake you up out of sleep. That's what we need to do. We need to be woke up. Well, anyway, uh, and they, uh, what I leave off, let's say verse 7, and, okay, uh, 19. And they took him and brought him to uh, Jephthah, saying, may we know what this new doctrine is. Uh, where thou speakest is, for thou bringest certain things, look, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, we would know thereof what these things mean. See, I'm willing to sit down with any church, any leader, any man of God, anywhere um, about the things that's going over, you know, about the things that I teach and the things I preach. I'm, you know, I've been sent to teach, I've been sent to preach, um, and and I'm here to restore, to help restore Israel um, back unto God. And um, 
and, and I'm interested in people that are being holy. So a lot of things that you hear me preach and teach, brothers and sisters, these things I've known for a long, long, long time. And not only have I known them, you know what people know by what they do. People can have mental assent for something all day long, but unless they are doing it, the truth is they don't know it. Having knowledge for something and yet not being a partaker or a doer does not make you a, a, an experienced expert. When you walk in the commandments, when you walk in the light, when you are, are living the light, then you know that that person has come to the fullness of understanding in that area. I just thought I'd brought a, bring a little clarity in here. Um, and, and maybe you can pass this along to some others. And maybe it will spark their interest and stuff. But again, always check out everything. Always verify everything because you've been trained and not educated. You have been deceived long enough.